uh, the department, the organizing committee, um, uh, which encompassed what the student of FSC 5109. And of course, Dr. Ahmad Hani Java, and also the department. Um, the department, there is uh, one, one I is not here. Uh, okay, so I would like to thank her personally because she has done so much work. Yes, she has helped a lot. Thanks. So let's start uh, uh, the uh, agenda for today. So uh, I'm happy to share to share whatever knowledge that I have with regards to the uh, topic, the letter for today, for this morning. And uh, this is very close to my heart. Since I, uh, when I was doing my master's, um, it was in nutrition. And as you know, functional food is beyond that of nutrition. I will give you the exact, um, maybe the definition later, okay, which will, which maybe will put us, us on the same page of this uh, subject area, okay? And I'm glad to see you all, and I would like to take all of you for a ride to see the wonders of functional foods. They are wonders, uh, really. And if you do not believe me, you will go, we will go together through this journey. And maybe at the end of this presentation, I will ask you again whether, you know, functional food can be a wonder to you. Okay, right? So, as I have mentioned just now, definition of things uh, would be the first uh, the first thing that we should look at. And similarly, in this uh, presentation, I will go first to the definition of functional food. Okay. Okay. Definition. Okay. So. I'm pretty sure actually that all of you or some of you may have heard about functional food before okay? and may be exposed and may have interest in this. But just to put everyone on the same page, I will just go through the definition. These are the food components that demonstrated physiological benefits. So for what? To reduce the risk of chronic diseases. Why? Because of the presence of the bioactive compounds, and this is above and beyond that of nutrition. Okay, like I said, beyond that of nutrition. Okay, and the food can be regarded as functional if it demonstrated to affect that beneficially one or more target functions in the body beyond of the nutritional functions and effects, okay? So, so this is on the way to improve health and well-being as well as reduction of risk of disease. So I'm not saying anything about curing of disease. That is very important, okay? So a functional food must remain a food, okay? So a food, and it is not a pill or capsule. So actually, there are different schools of thought in this. But since the name is functional food, it must remain a food, okay? So, and demonstrate its effect in amounts that can normally be expected to be consumed in the diet, right? So next, okay. So when I say that this is beyond that of nutrition, so I just want to emphasize once more, because maybe some of you are still confused, 
So if you remember back your lecture on macro components of food or macronutrient, nutritionally we we'll call macronutrient. And the main, the main component would be your carbohydrate, protein, and fat, right? Nutritionally, these are the function, okay? Functions of carbohydrate, the preferred source of energy, and you want to prevent ketosis and also to preserve your protein. And for protein, on the other hand, is for growth and repair of strong immune system, and it can be energy reserve. Uh, no, energy reserve is for fat. So the, the line is not, you know, it's not a line. So the function of fat is energy reserve. They insulate the body and for fat also. So these are nutritionally their function. Okay? Okay. Uh, so, when we talk about functional food, this same ingredient, this ingredient would affect physiological uh, body, you know, the physiological effect of the body. So it is not just looking at its function as uh, nutrient per se. So why functional food? So nowadays, people are concerned about their health. So, and nowadays, as our society becomes more affluent, and we have all these uh, state of the art apparatus, so there would be this greater understanding of the link between food and health. And as such, because of that, there are consumers great uh, interest in superfood. So, the other word for functional food has been coined as superfood, okay? So that can improve health and well-being. Who, don't, who doesn't want to be healthy, okay? Who doesn't want to be healthy? Because when you are free from burden of disease, you are healthy and you can do things. You can contribute to your, maybe to your parents, to your to your parents or contribute to the faculty, to the department, to the university, and meaning to say that you can contribute. If you are sick, you cannot do that. You are thinking about your sickness and you don't, you, you know, you cannot do anything. So you will be a burden to other people. And you don't want that. You must be healthy. So this is one of the ways that I want for you to see how you know you can improve your health and well-being through functional food. Okay, and at the same time, it will also boost up the immune system. When we talk about immune system, of course, this is coming very, very important now. So at the end of the presentation, I have a few slides that I think would be um, useful when we are in place with the emergence of new variant of COVID-19. You know, the new variant that has been said to be very aggressive, with no symptom, symptom whatsoever, and very difficult to detect. And also, it's, you know, very fast. In, uh, in. So, to boost up the immune system can be the way if we don't have the right vaccine, not yet, really. So we will be. And health, mental health also. And again, with the COVID-19, you know, ravishing all around us, and that affect a lot of people in terms of mental health. So we can do something. We can do something about the immune system, about our mental health, and we can also be with the right choices of food. Who does want that? That is if we can be part of the eating process. Okay, so next. However, and also if you look at the market size for functional food, it is booming. 
Okay, it is very, very big and uh, it was valued in 2020, 180 billion USD and increased to and expected to increase to 300, over 300 billion USD come 2027. So it's a huge okay. So if you want to be rich, Ah, maybe this is the bandwagon you should call. Right? Next. So these are the driving force. You may ask the question, what are the driving force, you know, in making this market size getting bigger and bigger? So these are some of the driving force you can, uh, especially the advances in science and technology. And now what's happening to the consumer is that they want to sell medication without having to go to the you know, health specialists. They want to do self-medication. And of course, skyrocketing healthcare costs. If you don't have insurance, you cannot stay in this hospital, right? Because of a high cost, health awareness, and also is a good marketing. And also, food industry are going aboard this regular band because who are the rich? All right, so next. Okay, and actually, of course, we know about this. We know about the quote by Hippocrates the medicinal power of food component. Let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food. That's what he said. Thousand years ago, two thousand five hundred years ago, that is a very long, long time. So you see, even Hippocrates at that time has realized the importance of nutrition to prevent or cure disease, or the impact of foods in preventing and cure disease. And it's that you just to mention that Hippocrates, you know, is the um, the student of Socrates, one of those awesome, awesome people, you know, Greek awesome people, and also we call father of medicine. So he must have known, you know, what he stated 2,500 years ago, All right? Next. And just to quote also a very famous person, Burkitt. Burkitt is the father of dietary fiber, one of the first person who discovered you know, the link between dietary fiber intake and Western diseases. Okay? And he was able to do that as he spent like 20 30 years of his life as a surgeon in South Africa. And he compared the diet between British, you know. British and also the South African people, and he saw the link. So this is the father of the people. So what he said is that diseases can really be eliminated, eliminated through early diagnosis or good treatment. So this is talking about prevention is always better than cure. And that is referring to functional food. So that's why I say this now that I'm not talking about curing. Curing is the job for the medical doctors. Okay? All right. So next. So maybe we should go on to look at some of the, you know, the classification of functional food for easy to understand. It, right? So you can have um, three different, um, maybe there are some other school of thought, but in this, there are three different classes that you can put. So you have the, the probiotics there, and you know that probiotics are good for healthy gut. We know this already, and maybe you have, you know, you have listened to some of these uh, lecture of probiotic. So this is well known. In fact, uh, the highest, the market size, the largest is 
uh, with dairy, a dairy product. So in this presentation, I will not focus so much on probiotic, right? And of course, there's natural food. This is the, the one existed naturally, you know? They contain the bioactive, bioactives, the bioactive compound that are, that contributed to the functionalities of functional right? So these are the examples. Okay, and that's why there are a lot of people um, going through this what we call as designer food. Okay, designer foods, functional food, they are also doing that are being incorporated with bioactive compounds. This bioactive compound, once you have identified as such, you are targeting for, depending on what functionalities you are targeting, what biological effects that you want to emphasize on. So it could be cancer, heart disease, or diabetes, you know, the three, three big diseases, the three killers of Malaysia, for your information, if you want to know, right? Um, and of course, if you want to boost up your immune system, right, mental health, and so on and so forth, and those other functionalities. So for example, you can make ice cream with, uh, you know, you may put some bioactive compound, known bioactive compound, they are known for certain functionalities, well known for certain functionalities. And maybe energy drink, okay? Or other foods. And of course, this food, this one looks like candy, but functional food, you cannot incorporate, you cannot incorporate bioactive compound, it will be pointless for you. I ask you a question. If you were to incorporate this bioactive compound into candies. And that can be done by other people. You know, like candies. What are candies? They are high sugar. Okay? And um, that is not right because I have seen candy with capricorn. You know, capricorn put in candy. Uh, because functional food must be taken as part of a balanced diet. And healthy living, right? A little bit. Okay, so the example. Okay, I think this example, Cosmos Pedetes, is one of our local herb that is very fast growing, right? And it can be found in you know, many, many places in Malaysia, grow very easily, very rapidly. And and people have done studies, we have done studies looking at the functionality of this, you know, this awesome curve. Okay, so I want to call it awesome curve. All right? So, with all this functionality, because of the bioactive compound, that's it in this curve. Right? Mm -hmm. It's only limited by your imagination. You imagine it and you can, once you know the target compound, you know the, you know the functionality, which target group that you want to do for, you know? Is it, uh, you know, aging? to keep people always young or diabetic or heart disease or cancer or things like that or compromise immune system individual, right? So you can design the food with Cosmos Creator and in particular is bioactive compound. So that's the kind of thing. Okay, next. All right, so uh, in this presentation, of, of course, you know, uh, nature has blessed us with so many different types of bioactive. 
you know, especially in this year, we are blessed with you know, diversity of uh, um, fauna, you know, with diversity of herbs that have not been, some have not been ex any investigated and things like that. There are so many, but of course we cannot, you know, we cannot go over it. So what, uh, what I'm going to present, okay, is just the derivative of the uh, macro components of food, like carbonation, carbohydrate, protein, and the and the uh, protein, lipid, and of course the phytochemical, because there is a big thing going on. Okay. So, bioactive compounds. I have mentioned so many times about bioactive compounds. So, what are they? These bioactive compounds, they, you know, there are a lot of bioactive compounds. Why? That's why I'm saying it brought diversity, you know, of structure. And because of broad diversity of structure, so you will also have a broad diversity of functionality. You remember your structure, activity, relationship. Remember that? So maybe you have taken this, uh, um, uh, especially when you're talking about protein, it is so very relevant here. You know, the where protein must have a certain structure in order to be able to do certain things. So there is structure, properties relationship, or structure, activity relationship. So, but if you're talking about functionalities of protein, there is another story altogether. That one has nothing to do with health benefit. So don't get confused, all right? So, but just for you to understand that when you have certain structure, that particular compound will be able to have certain property. Okay? Like, you know, very simple example, like tall people. Tall people can play basketball very well. Why? So the structure of, you know, being tall, so it gives the you know, ability for the person to be a good basketball player. Similarly, if you're talking about soccer player, can a very tall person be a good soccer player? Or can a skinny person be a good rugby player? So you're looking at structure, activity, relationship, right? In protein, in people, and also in biotic compound. So with this broad diversity of structure, of course, if you want to do chemical synthesis, it will be very difficult. And so that's why we are talking about functional ingredients and not functional food. We are not talking about isolated bioactive compound. Okay, this is important. When you you have to have the knowledge which bioactive compound that are responsible for the functionality that you mentioned. Okay? You have to know the bioactive compound, but you don't have to extract them, you know, and starting putting them into your your foods or the, the designer food that you together. That will not wise. Okay. So, so you have functional carbohydrate, biopeptide, the famous ferric acid, and the phytochemical. So the sources of material, of course, I have mentioned that nature is blessed with abundance of flora and fauna. This is as agreed by United Nations. You know, we should be happy. Thankful because a lot we have a lot of raw material, they have not been, you know, they have not been touched. So, this careful evaluation must be done comprehensive evaluation 
of the world already there. Because we have plants, marine organisms, should know this and and any more products. Right? Okay, so next, these are the sources of the Okay, let's just go into carbohydrate. Okay, this is just to remind of your new course. You don't, I don't need it to be put in mind. You all know already your carbohydrates, right? So there's good carbohydrate, there's bad carbohydrate, then you want to avoid. So which one? Right? So you have simple complex carbohydrate, and of course, all the simple and also complex one. So now with carbohydrate, there are some that are digestible and some that are non-digestible. Okay, non-digestible. So what happened to this part, this carbohydrate that are non-digestible? So they will go from your small intestine, not being digested, so big, big compound, molecular weight, so big. You think they can be absorbed by the body? It's not body, you know, we absorb, you know, mono, mono units, very small. Okay. So they will go to the colloid, and there, that is where the impact, the biological effects from what we call as dietary fiber, non digestible carbohydrate, have its impact, you know, in the colloid. And we will go through that later in greater detail. And some of this, um, these are the examples. I just want to say soluble fermented. That means soluble fiber. They are still not digested, but they are soluble in nature. And as such, they will be fermented in our colloid by our little friends. We have a lot of friends in our colloid. And let's hope, let's hope that the friends are the good ones and not otherwise. So this will ferment our soluble fiber. So these are going to be examples of several fiber. Oligosaccharide, resistor, starfactin, calm, sucerages. And of course, the insoluble fiber, being insoluble fiber, they will go, also go through the small intestine and not being digested. But there are things that insoluble dietary fiber can do in the small intestine, and then off to your colon, all right? And just like solid, soluble fiber, the insoluble can also impact on the colon, our colon. So like cellulose, part of heavy cellulose, lignin, chyrosine, chitin, and so on, and so forth. That's for the animal kingdom, chitin, chyrosine, right? So next, uh, so that is what we call as functional carbohydrate. So functional carbohydrate is what you should be looking at. You know, what you should uh, be consuming, okay? So because they play important roles in health and well-being, you know, with all this functionality, okay, next. So it is also a booming market. The next, with the data there. So you know your dietary fiber. Maybe I don't have to uh, tell you. You already know about dietary fiber, right? But incidentally, I think um, you don't have to copy anything because Dr. Honey will give you the slide for those who are, you know, writing something that Dr. Honey will give you the slide. I don't mind, I want to share, you know? share the, the knowledge with everybody. So next. So this is just looking at the, some of the possible mechanism of action, um, mechanism of protective effect from dietary fiber, both the soluble and insoluble. And of course, because of the different structure, you would expect different times in that different activity that they can do, right? So must always remember SAR. SAR. What is SAR? 
Yes, the relationship is the structure activity or structure properties relationship. All right. So this binding of cholesterol biosol, the ability to bind cholesterol biosol and maybe procarcinogen that may come from biosol cell. Okay. And this is talking about undegradable fibers. And such, as such cholesterol, biosol, and this will not be absorbed. Okay. So because of that, the lowering of cholesterol level, and of course, when cholesterol will not be absorbed, a lot will go to the colloid, and the same with biosol. And biosol, you need biosol to produce more cholesterol. That is being done by your liver. Okay, liver is your making house. You know, a lot of uh, reaction going on in your liver. That's why if you have something wrong going on in your liver, my God, that is bad, right? So this is one of the things, okay? So cholesterol, this is exogenous cholesterol, cholesterol coming in from exogenous, from external, external sources. So will not be absorbed. So because of that low rate of cholesterol, at the same time, biosol that is required for cholesterol formation will also not be absorbed. So the liver will have to make more biosol in order to help lipid and cholesterol to be absorbed, to be digested and also absorbed. So you have dual action of cholesterol lowering property there, right? So this is gas. Insoluble, soluble, soluble. So you will, you know, read the game and you know, come up with the answer. All right, water absorption, this is by soluble fiber, increase viscosity, delay in the digestion and absorption. That's happening to when you eat a uh, lot of fiber. So you will become very viscous. In the intestines, okay, everything very rich. So you examine the jaw to chop, chop, chop all this macromolecule will not be able to meet the substrate. So what happened? So there is a vein in the intestine, and this is what happening to um when you eat fiber, healthy fiber, and you notice that your host friend of glucose level. What happened to your glucose level? Delay, so you will not have the peak of glucose level. So delay in the absorption of glucose, so your glucose level in the blood will not be high. So this is the mechanism for, you can see for diabetes and also for coronary heart disease. Increase the cover and shorten transit time. So when you have things in your colloid for a long time, and you're supposed not to, these things, so, and make worse by the presence of bad friends or bad bacteria in your colloid, you can have carcinogen being you know, it's better being trans transport. Okay. Well, maybe from your bowel sort itself. Okay. And this uh, people have seen this in the study. So like shorter time due to fecal bar is very really good. It's good, right? It's good. So this will be in the inhibited. And the reduction of 29 is also beneficial to the health of that. Okay. So, and if your fiber is degraded by colony bacteria, your good friends in the colon, you must make sure that your friends in the colon are the good ones. This is very critical, okay? So, what happened there will be lowering of the colon pH because of the generation of short chain acid. And in this, because of the acidic nature of the colon, 
certain bacteria will be implicated. In particular, bacteria that can convert your flow carcinogen to carcinogen. So that is one of the way how carcinogenesis is being prevented in the nitric fiber. You know, things happening in the fiber. So intake of nitric fiber don't underestimate. It's very important. How do you know that you're not taking enough nitric fiber? How do you know that you are not taking enough dietary fiber? How do you know? This is not for this is not bonus question. I think I will have a bonus question where, where the organizer will give you gifts. You do have gifts, right? Uh, to be student that get the question right. Okay. So because this is very easy, right? How do you know that you're not getting enough nitric fiber? Yeah, you don't go to the restroom regularly. If you don't go to the restroom regularly, you should be looking at the poisons of food to affect that, for example. All right. So you have this uh, growth DH allow for the growth of certain beneficial bacteria. This is good. You must have this. And I will show you later why. And then this is enhancement of the growth of the right species of bacteria. Okay? All right. So all of these are associated with lowering the risk of chronic diseases. Okay. And I have to stop it. Okay, uh, we will work, sir. Within this graph, this is you can see this is in uh, for diabetes uh, management, diabetic management, right? So, this is uh, incorporation of the insoluble fiber, the native uh, fiber here, they call it as MHD. All right, so incorporated into granula, and as you can see. This is the control, and this is the one incorporated with 5 grams and 2.5 grams. And you can see the impact on the blood glucose level. Do you know what your blood glucose level? How many of you actually take uh, you know, care of your blood glucose level? Just to know, to know your blood glucose level. Let me see what's the number, what's the statistic. I will ask, you know, I will ask my student, what are your statistics? Statistic, not you know, the other statistic that people always refer to. This is talking about the blood glucose level, your um, blood pressure. You know, blood pressure is another one you should be, you know, you should know also. And um, sometimes your cholesterol level, but now maybe we can let go of cholesterol because of the new findings. Okay, next. Oh, yeah, this is a resistance search. It's worth mentioning. So, this is an example of soluble fiber. Okay, and we can get resistance starch from our rice, you know, when we cook our rice and we put in the fridge and voila, take out and you get resistance starch. All right? Right? So, so resistance starch is, uh, you know, the way that they will, of course, they, they will not be digested. Okay? And from small intestine, we'll go to the colon. And it will do wonders to the good friends that you have. Right? Next. So, uh, these are some of the health benefits. Okay, you can read later because what I'm going to show you is the mechanism. Okay? All right. So, the mechanism involved in, uh, you know, when you have resistance starch. As your, your part of your balance diet, right? So, normal starches, of course, 
will be digested and absorbed. So you have resistant starch. No digestion will go into the colon. So colon, right? Small intestine. Right. So the impact of resistant starch, and I mentioned that it is an example of soluble fatty fiber. So oligosaccharide will be the same. Remember oligosaccharide, fructo oligosaccharide, they are all the prebiotics. No prebiotics, they are the food for your probiotics. But in this case, if you were to consume this wonderful plant source material, right? So they, uh, you know, will be degraded or fermented by our friends in the food. Okay, this is what I mentioned about our food friends in the food. They will help us tremendously. Help us tremendously. So the reason why you should make sure that the little friends there are of the good ones, okay? So this is uh, what uh, you can say that is more of prebiotic effect. So you have the feed, you're given food for the small chaps, okay? So they are being fermented and you have short chain fatty acids being generated, butyrate, propionate, so on and so forth. And as such, there will be lowering of the pH of your colon. Okay, when that happens, many, many things, many, many wonders will happen to your colon, to the impact to your colon because of your consumption of this soluble fiber. Okay. So you have, because butyrate is also, for example, feed, this is feed for the microbes, okay? So it will foster the growth of the microbes, the good, uh, the good ones. So a lot, the microbes can grow healthy, very healthy, right? And at the same time, they are also the preferred fuel for the colon cell, okay? So, and, this is what we call as favorable for non carcinogenic bacteria. Non carcinogenic bacteria means that they are not those bacteria, bad bacteria, they can convert your uh, pro carcinogen to carcinogen. And that is one of the reasons for the colon cancer. Development of colon cancer, that is what I am, my new. Huh? Right? So, so because of this, our good friend will produce bioactive compound for us. They will actually produce bioactive compound. Yet the cell, colon cell can actually absorb and go into the, our, our um, will be distributed into the system, okay. For example, how about serotonin, no, I've read, you, you have heard about this, acetylcholine. Yeah, you know, they can regulate mood and your cognition. Maybe none of you have, you know, um, have been depressed before. Huh? Or maybe, I don't know. So let's hope that none of you has ever been depressed before. You are happy, go lucky in your life. So we in Malaysia have quite high statistic of depressed people. People with anxiety. And it's very, very difficult for them, for this individual to actually let, you know, a positive life with okay? it. So, and it's getting higher, the statistics get higher because of the COVID, the two years or maybe three years already, yeah, we are uh, being, you know, uh, faced with this uh, uh, COVID situation. So, you know that depressed people, people uh, uh, with depression, the report things about this serotonin will be good for them. Okay? 
especially serotonin. And serotonin has been, you know, given to depressed people. You know, uh, by, by uh, doctors, okay? So, uh, have you heard about serotonin? You know why conventionally mothers, you know, if they have children who cannot sleep at night, you know, and you see at night. So they will go to the kitchen and actually, what do they do? They warm the meal. Warm the meal. Well, these are not babies, they also can be children. They can also be adults. The double can also sleep because they're always thinking about so many things depressed before they're not sleep. So go one of the things that you can do, go to the kitchen and warm the meal. Why? Because milk consisted of a lot of tryptophan. You know what tryptophan is? No amino acid, right? So tryptophan will be and can be converted to serotonin. So serotonin will give this calming effect, saying that it's okay, it's okay, everything will be fine. Don't worry, you can go to sleep. So that's why I mentioned this now that doctors actually give serotonin to the patient to suffer depression, anxiety. And it is not, you know, not nice to have this. This can be worse than if you get into what we call as medical health. Yeah. And this is no joke. A lot of people in Malaysia, which I'm talking about statistics in Malaysia, having this mental health problem. So start with your good friends. Make sure your good friends are flourishing in your order. But they can tell you, they can actually synthesize all these good things and some other thing also. And because you, are, you will feed. The colon cell also, right? And also for the immune system, for that matter. And here, this um, butyrate is not, uh, can also, the presence of butyrate can also, you know, somehow it will reduce inflammation, increase antioxidant, and also prevent cancer. Right? Next. Okay, so we are done with the monetary, so we can make it to buy it like that. All right, so this is, of course, from the name peptide, and it's from protein, right? So bioactive peptides are also famous, and we have a big group here in the faculty who are doing a lot of work, a lot of good research on biopeptide. Okay, it's different, you know, from different sources. All right, so this is talking about specific protein fragment that can act as a colony um, agent. So very short for the uh, pack, okay? So with definite primary structure, remember the primary structure, okay? All the peptides. So but these are very short peptides, okay? So, Peptides with biological activities that will be released during protein hydrolysis. All right, so the use enzyme, sequential enzyme, or you can use the micro as a curl implementation, or sometimes it also occurs during food processing. All right, so, so this is why peptide can also be the functional ingredient. For your health promotion in this So, a variety of food sources have been used into in generating bioactive peptide, as you can see here. And a lot of studies have also been done here in the faculty. So, next. And similarly, lots of biological effects have been uh, investigated using this peptide. Right? So, immunomodulating, it will good, it will be good if your 
peptides can have, you know, multifunctional, can be multifunctional. You need to see that one peptide, bioactive peptide, can have maybe antioxidant activity and also in hypertensive. Because a lot of work are being done on looking the first, you know, first work uh, looking at the antihypertensive effect of this uh, biopeptide. So, 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 like I said, this uh, work has been done a lot, you know, by people. So, so it has been shown that biopeptides, some biopeptides can inhibit, you know, to inhibit the for ACE enzyme, for angiotensin converting enzyme. Why you want to meddle with this? You want to inhibit this activity because ACE will, now this is the uh, reaction, it will release the octopeptide angiotensin 2 that is a potent vasoconstrictor. And you know what? Vasoconstrictor, it can cause high blood pressure. So, so this has been, you know, we even have, you know, in the market already, the, you know, the peptides that can be used. Right? Uh, so this is telling about the actual residues on the peptide that can do this. Again, structure activity relationship. Okay, next. Um, so this is looking at the antioxidant activity, just now the hypertensive. So this is antioxidant activity. And you would have expected, you would have uh, guessed, yeah. the biopeptides with certain amino acid as residue will be able to have those activities, okay? Like the sulfur containing amino acid of the theobium and cysteine. You must remember where all your amino acid, okay? Because some of this amino acid can help can aid in the redox reaction in the antioxidant. In giving the biopeptide, the antioxidant property required, right? So this is some of the known, uh, known biotech that they have the high antioxidant activity. So next, so I would like to finish with that. Stop me. And this is the mechanism of action of the antioxidant um, amino acid. So this, uh, okay, if you have your peptide with specific residue, amino acid residue, and you should have expected that it will have antioxidant activity, right? So, okay, I just want to finish the biopeptide, okay? So, and there's also next, next uh, this is again showing the importance of spike acid, vitamin acid and residue, right? And next, uh, and there's also antimicrobial peptides, right? You can read about this, right? Next, uh, and this is uh, the antimicrobial peptides, the structural connection, the SAR. Okay, what kind of structure required to have this antimicrobial activity? Right, next. And of course, the antidiabetic peptide will also have this, right? And next. Uh, okay, then is omega 3 fatty acid. So maybe this is from derived the data. So we have done carbohydrate, so we have done protein. Next will be protein. So, uh, you want me to start, right? Now, uh, wait, okay. So you all of you are sleepy already. Okay, sorry to keep for All right, thank you, Prof. I know Prof has a lot more to share with y'all, but if you just take a five minute break, y'all can eat and drink for the food available behind that. And also for attendance, we will share a QR code here and a link. You can use either of it. Uh, please scan and make sure you all write your name uh, in correct spelling because it will be auto-generated for your certificate data. 
So just double confirm your spelling and the attendance link. And the attendance link only will be open until 12 p.m. today. Uh, after that, you won't be attending. <laughs> so please fill out the attendance by 10 p.m. Just fill out now like that. We will see at 10 p.m. Share the link. Right, for the online participation, we will share a link for you all to uh, submit the attendance. So make sure you all also scan your name correctly. Okay. I'm sure. yeah. You're going to stop sharing screen 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 yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, good morning, everyone. Are you all energized? Then, hopefully, you all don't sleep. Okay, uh, we're going to have quiz, bonus quiz from Prof later. So, I hope you all can pay attention more so we can get it later. All right, so again, I would like to call Prof to go into the session. Thank you. Let's see. So, I hope that uh, you know uh, nobody has gone to sleep for to that island, uh, peaceful island. You know. So maybe the lecture has been long and um, maybe uh, too slow. So maybe I can go faster. So. All right, so uh, okay, the next um, the next macro molecule or macro components of food that we're going to be looking at is uh, of course lipids, and this is derived from uh, our lipids. This is a well known functional ingredient, but with new uh, data, a new research, they have got, you know, uh, this uh, they have seen that this omega 3 fatty acid have been, you know, um, shining, you know, once more, you know, shining once more because of the new method, meaning to say the drag involved in many other functionalities. Um, we used to learn about this in the 70s and 80s, just for coronary heart disease. But this one, as I have mentioned before, the S our society becomes more affluent. We know a lot more because we have more state of the art um, um, machines and we can collect data that once are not possible before. And so we actually have the you know, expansion of functionality with respect to omega 3 fatty acids. So please continue consuming omega 3 fatty acids. They are good, right? They are the good guys, right? All right, so um, just to refresh the memory of some of you, we go very fast. What the omega 3 fatty acids are, why they are called omega 3, I don't have to go into that structure. You all of you have know about that already, yeah? but then if you know about that already. So, but uh, in omega 3 fatty acid, there are two types. Actually, basically, there are two types of uh, sources, two types of sources, where you can get plant sources and also the marine fishes sources. So which one is better? Of course, the fishes. I will not advise people to eat, uh, you know, plant sources, although some of the sources, uh, some of the seeds, huh? The what do you call that? Um, the chia seed, chia seed, and uh, has some lot of um, you can call it omega three, but they are of the plant omega three. There is the linolenic, linolenic, uh, the is the linolenic acid, right? And the good ones that we want is the one from the marine, marine fishes, okay, marine fishes and not even freshwater fishes. And by this case, it depends on the feed that they use in feeding the, the freshwater fish, okay? So, because we want the EPA, the acid, the five double bond, and dopamine acid. The six of the one, the very long chain, and a lot of set unsaturation very acid that we can get from the fishes, many different types of fishes, right? And actually, our body can convert we know lemmy because it is also the, in the family and yeah? family of omega 3, convert little lemmy to EPA and DHA five. That one is not efficient. The conversion is not really efficient. 
So although TRC and Apple says have like a lot of linolenic acid, okay, but if you want to use that as your source for omega 3 fatty acid, so I will advise you this, right? Stick to the fishes. After all, fishes are more delicious. Cheers. You are good cook, very easy, right? So, um, so the plant derived and the omega tree, uh, the uh, marine fish. So this, you can look at the sources. You can see the sources they are all from the sea. Okay, I show the sources from the sea and the recommended amount very little actually. But if you were to consume like fishes. But the one recommended by Ministry of Health, our will Ministry of Health, three times a week, that is sufficient. That is sufficient, sufficient. Especially fishes, uh, the fatty, you know, the one consisted a lot of fatty, um, uh, the, a lot of fats. Okay, so like, Oh, we can uh, well uh, I'm not really good in tobacco. The honey is very good in fish, right? Uh, you know, and what is it called? Snapper, you know, like uh, some of uh, uh, just uh, normal fish, you know, don't have to go to salmon for food. Uh, I said, right? Of course, uh, so next, the benefits actually, benefits of omega 3 is a lot. Okay, as you can see, hey, why are we All right, so uh, those are the human functions that uh, studies have shown in what middle of your omega 3. Uh, but incidentally, I was, uh, when I showed you the sources just now, it is uh, uh, from a lot of marine, marine fishes. So they have found out that if you were to compare between the freshwater fishes, because you also have a lot of freshwater fishes in Malaysia, you know, from the lakes and all. So the level saturation of omega 3 varieties but much, much lower in fresh water fish. Okay, so get this. This is the bonus question. If you can answer this, you will get a special mystery. Is it mystery? No, <laughs> special gift from the department. Or is it from Astera? Anyway, it is a special gift. All right, fresh water fishes, okay, the level of omega 3 fatty is much, much lower in comparison to the marine fishes, right? So that is the statement. But uh, don't tell me that you eat soil or things like that to the fresh water fish. So maybe you can, you know, increase a little bit. But normally, the concentration is much lower. Right now, the question. Can you tell me why why the level of omega 3 fatty is much higher in this fish in comparison to the freshwater fish? Why the level of omega 3 fatty acid? And I'm not talking about the plant omega 3, not you know, this is talking about EPA and DHA, why they are lower. In freshwater fish, in comparison to the marine fish, that is the bonus question for this morning. If you are able to satisfy me with a, you know, good answer, I will say that okay, you can get the bonus gift. All right. So, anybody wants to answer? You have to put out your hands in order to answer because I don't want people to murmur, murmur, murmur the answer. I want the person to say the answer confidently 
Now, whenever he has a must be that confidently so that people will believe him. Right? All right. So I'm waiting. Who wants to try for the question, the bonus question? Why the level of omega 3 very acid are higher in marine fishes in comparison to that of freshwater fish? Right. So, anybody wants to try? Anybody wants to try? Come on. Don't be shy. Okay, what's your name? You want you want to get hold of the mic? Then I will not be able to hear you. <laughs> Hi all, I'm Chong. Uh, I'm not sure the answer, but I just guess. <laughs> so maybe in the ocean uh, is colder and deeper, that's why the pressures is uh, high. That's why the fish needs more fats to protect the organs compared to the uh, freshwater fish. You must have system fit Maybe it's uh, because of the double bonds in omega 3 is much more, so it's easier to be utilized, meta uh, metabolized for the oh, functional of the disease. You're right. First, all the acetation, the uh, lower acetation. And what will get the result? You're talking about freezing point and freezing point. Uh, so uh it's quite a lower so uh so the, the fish will not get frozen easily. Yes, that's right. That is true with evolution. It is true. So yeah, you think about it, you know, the low temperature surrounding the fish. So the fish can be you know what will happen. Oh okay. <laughs> I thought it might have worked. Now, now, okay. On my so, are you all satisfied with the answer? Yeah. All right, you can get this. This will be so. Uh, that is the good So, next, we can go back faster, I think, because we are running out of time. All right, so maybe you can put everything there. These are the benefits of Omega 3 capacity. They can have, you know, and now there's a normal the one um, in the seventies. We thought that, you know, all this are uh, number one to number six. You know, that's true. 
caused by inefficient death. There's also uh, studies involving uh, neural and retina development, in particularly in the baby or in the um, fetus, trimester, I can see of the fetus. So it is crucial that the babies or the fetus have sufficient amount of omega-3. And because of that, you know, I remember once that the, the milk, uh, milk powder company, they wanted to incorporate some of the um, omega-3 acid into the milk powder. Because they say that some of the baby, in particular, uh, the premature baby will not have suppression. And this is especially, uh, you know, for the normal development of retina for the eye and for the nervous system. So what did they do? They add linolenic to the powder. What will happen if you were to add a linolenic milk powder? Linolenic powder forms there is Oli, linoli, linoleni. How many? You know the unsaturation. Unsaturation will cause the susceptibility to oxidation. Okay, will increase the susceptibility. Okay, the susceptibility of the ferric acid to undergo oxidation. So, so it is not a good thing because little, little many, although it is the fun omega tree, and we have doubts about its benefit, but it will be very prone to oxidation because of three, have a one, three unsaturation in the little many. So, that is not the plan here, right? So, they just want to. You know, sell the product. Right? So, so next. So, this is uh, talking about studies I showed. The first one is the low efficacy. The, the longer one, the sixth level one. Okay? Uh, high cost, they found high concentration in the cell membrane of the retina. Okay? So, even when the intake is low. So, so there, uh, and this is um, um, proof that DHA is required for the normal development and function of the retina. And for, for babies, in particular the premature babies, so it is very, very important that there will be, there should be nurse, should be given mother's milk because Mother's milk is uh, no comparison. We do have this long chain very acid or mega very acid in comparison to the milk powder. Okay, so because I have uh, in it, uh, visual and neural development, as, uh, as I have mentioned before. So, next, uh, this is talking about hypersinoid, that is the signaling molecule. Uh, there is a being uh, generated from omega-3 very acid, DHA and EPA. So, okay, the icosinoid, so very important messenger, all right, next. So, so the good and the bad, if you to compare omega-3 and omega-6, so <clears throat> the, the, the different icosinoids, they are being formed from omega-3 and omega-6, they are different. So as you go down the flow chart, you can see that omega-3 derived hypersinoid will appear once they are anti-inflammatory. Anti-inflammatory. On the other hand, your omega-6, the oils from the vegetable, a lot of that from the vegetable, will give you Hypersinoid, they are pro-inflammatory. Okay. 
hydronic acid, the one, um, the our body convert the linoleic, when the six is linoleic acid, to form alkydronic. And the presence of alkydronic can be said to be the signs of inflammation. Okay? So next, so this is the good and the bad, you know, omega-6 and omega-3 for you to have important choices, right? right? And what will happen when you have excessive omega-3 fatty acid intake? And that's what's happening now. If you look at our diet, that's why the three times per week of fish is very important, very critical, all right? So you can have with excessive production of omega-6, so those things will order. In particular, information. So next, uh, okay, uh, this is what happened also, high linoleic acid diet. So those foods shown in the pictures, they are showing you um, the foods that are high in linoleic acid, the omega-6. It is important because you we must balance the ratio of omega-6 and omega-3 in the diet. The problem is that omega-3 is difficult for you, you know, in your choosing the food, unless you are eating fish. Okay, because a lot of our foods are all Okay, you can have a look at that. You know, on what will happen, uh, the whole inflammatory that will interfere with the one by EP will interfere with program cancer cell death. You know, cancer, uh, our normal cell, not talking about cancer cell, normal cell will have this, what we call as program autopsy. Uh, Need to say there will come a time when they will uh, die and then new cells will be generated. What about with the cancer cells that they will go about toxins? So this program death is no longer there. The ability to go into apoptosis is not, and that's the reason why partly cancer cells will, you know, continue, continue growing and growing and so on. Um, and so forth, and invade other places, invade other organs. So that is one of the effects of cardinolic, the omega-6, okay, right? So maybe we can go fast, okay? Uh, this is talking about omega-6 and cancer, okay? So this is animal uh, models, and there are a few human studies that have been done. So the, uh, actually, the result is inconclusive. The link between omega-3 and cancer. Okay, next. Uh, and this is quite interesting. We are talking about depression just now with your, um, you know, your um, functional carbohydrate just now. So with your omega-3, there is also a link between Major depression in bipolar disorder, you know, bipolar disorder. Um, you know, this one day, wake up, you know, this your friend. Uh, sometimes looks okay, right? Without any uh, warning whatsoever. So the behavior changes. You know, bipolar, what people say, uh, bipolar disorder. When the holding and also depression, depression as well. So, <clears throat> and EPA and DHA can help A in these people, right? So, next, schizophrenia. Schizophrenia, you know what that is? You know, we are going deeper into the state of the mind okay so this is uh more serious than just being depressed uh and regular so schizophrenia 
So thanks. So like I've just mentioned that they have very important antioxidant activity. Remember, I showed you the unsaturation and also the aromatic. These are called aromatic, right? So, and the hydroxyl group and also the ketone group here with hydroxyl group very close to each other. So, they can be very good you know, antioxidant activity because of that. Okay? And in addition, when you have something like this, that particular flavor not can also have very powerful chelating property. You know what chelating should be? They will be able to bind metals. What is required in an uh, oxidation process? Involvement of metal. So if you are able to buy metal, so you can get rid of one of the substrate, you know, substrate. So that will give you the antioxidant property also. Okay, next. Uh, and in addition, the direct scavenging of free radical, which have been proven. Okay, even more very powerful the support side. Super oxide and the parasol, uh, peroxynitrite. These are all very, very, you know, very aggressive. Theoretical. Okay. So, next, uh, there's also, uh, you know, this is a little bit of uh, explanation about the oxide. Okay. All right. Next. And natural oxide can be involved in the uh, involvement in the generation of uh, superoxide and also peroxynitrite. This peroxynitrite is a very potent antioxidant, very, very potent. And if you have your body, you know, this is not okay for the food, but your body, and the generation of this pero uh, peroxynitrite is not being arrested. So you will be in trouble. In particular, if your what we have in our system is what we call S the front line S, also I call it you front line S. <laughs> front line S, there is the endogenous oxidation uh, system that we have in our body. So this uh, front line S will be able to scratch, you know, scratch or capture all the free radical. But if your life is full, too much free radicals around you, and you would be, um, you know, you're doing nothing about it, so the system is overwhelmed. So the, the system cannot work. And that's the reason why the system needs the help from exogenous antioxidants. What does it mean? Exogenous antioxidant or the antioxidant that you consume from your foods that you get from your food to help your this you know endogenous system that has been put in. So you don't want it to be overwhelmed. All right, to get overwhelmed. So it's very important to help your body. Some cases, okay. All right, so. Next, so the ability for flavonoids to scavenge natural oxide slowly. When you have excess, you know, generation of natural oxide, because it can be very, very, very good. That's when your body, the whole system will be under oxidative stress. All right, so next. Okay, this is showing you the kinetic ability for some of the flavonoids, okay? So specific structure, we'll be able to do that, right? And next, have to go first, okay? Next, making, but that is nolly compound. So very fast, carotenoid. So have you got enough? I mean, you have a date for what? Okay, 
You all okay? Yes. Everybody is so quiet. <laughs> all right, the karate noise that gives colors to our world. Okay? So appreciate the karate noise. If not, I would not be very boring. It's all those highlights. All right, so. All right, so next. So uh, I look at the one more than the come out. Oh. Uh, like OP. I like like OP. Better than the karate. Well, I don't know why. Maybe because like OP is the reddish one. And this one is more orange. 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 So you, you sort of, you know, you can tell your sources, the fruits, your vegetables, uh, where, you know, where you can get this uh, echopene, bitter carotene, you know, great of watermelon, great of the pink of what? Guava. And what are other fruits that uh, you can think about that you think the tomato? Posture. And there is in Western country, they always say tomato has an onion. Of course, you know, that's what they do. But we have a lot of sauce that you know, we get now. We have a lot. So, lutein, um, and these are the major carotenoids. Okay, and this is cryptose empty. And okay, next, so lycopene, so you can see lycopene. So remember this group are very seldom can see this already in the market. What happened to the room? And, and this is not uh, delicious, but they turn this into powder and they make it into drinks. We do have that. Um, so uh, think about the sauces. Of course, your watermelon. Oops. What? Very fast. Okay, lycopene. Lycopene is a very potent antioxidant. More potent than this authority. I would say more potent than this authority. All right, next. Yes, this is biological activity. I have so many more slides. Okay, so maybe we can uh, looking at prostate cancer. Okay, next. Uh, cardiovascular disease involving lycopene, okay? And next, uh, okay, this is like a, a new king in the block, you know, new king in the block, you know, that expression, right? So this is, uh, actually, this is well known in uh, Malaysia, but the Western you know, only get to know about this, uh, maybe the last uh, 10 years or something, yeah? So, you know this, huh? You need it, you need it. Cucumin, cucumalonga, cucumin. So uh, that is, uh, you know, very, very important. You can see the next. They show the ability of cucumin work. What cucumin there? You know what this is? This is one dish they use a lot of. Cooking. Mm -hmm. Anybody can cook this. I mean, if you use pressures, there is more. This is very delicious. Very delicious. Okay. So, this will be very good. Uh, uh, thumbs up for the Chris Milan people. <laughs> Who are from the Christmas chat? Show yourself. Nobody. Okay. I'm able to choose very, uh, very delicious this uh, uh, dish, dish that use a lot of cucumber and even the leaves is a very potent and the leaves is also delicious. Okay? So you can say this is functional food. Okay? So this is the mechanism uh, of action, right? Thanks. Of the cooking, you can read because I, I want because I have another topic actually. Okay, okay. The development of functional food. So actually, this is not supposed to be in, in the, the one in five or zero students. 
But <clears throat> development of functional food is a, is a very uh, difficult task, actually. I know you see the market size is very big, huge market size, and a lot of people want to be doing. So this is one of the way. And first, I show you one of the obstacles. Obstacle in the development of functional food. Okay? So the comprehensive evaluation of bioresources, remember, we have like abundance, and some of them will not be you know, tested before. So we have to do that first. And then the regulation is also not favorable. Regulation, our country's regulation is not. But the lack of some scientific evidences in some of the products and the that we can find in the market nowadays, and they say that it's functional food with claims, which is not allowed. You know that claims have claims are not allowed in Malaysia. The regulation is not there. And sustainability of the product. Okay. <coughs> Next. Okay. So in the development of functional food, maybe just let me finish. The uh, you know there's uh, I think two or three slides. Development of functional food. Okay, first you have to identify the target group, the problem to be solved. So what functionality are you do you want to emphasize on that you want to focus on? Is it anti-diabetic? You see, diabetic, for example, diabetic people in Malaysia is you know is increasing every year. So do you want to tackle that? All right. So you have four person, you know, maybe it's cancer or the aging property, you want to delay any whatsoever, or you want to boost up the immune system, so you have to have that already. <coughs> then next, <coughs> the comprehensive evaluation of the raw material, screening based on the raw material that we have, whether the this can tackle the first problem, not the problem that you have to solve. Then of course, this the, the, the third one will involve a lot of study. Okay, a lot of studies in terms of the efficacy and toxicity of the raw material. It's very important that you have this established with your so you will have to demonstrate safety and efficacious level. Okay, uh, this will involve you know the acute subcortical toxicity study, and in the efficacy study, also the individual cell line bioavailability. Animal experimentation and even up to human study because you want to safely say you want to say that it is the efficacy is there, it can do its job. Okay, so next, <coughs> so then <coughs> you design your functional food. With your specific identified functionality. Of course, this is not easy, also optimization of the formulation. You have to think about the delivery system, and uh, you have also have to do the storage study and sensorial evaluation study of your food that you created. That you build. You must have, also have the acceptance and preference study for the population. All right? And then, first, the human trial of the, the dynamic that you have created. All right? This will again look at the efficacy and safety. Important safety, in particular, you are using your world by your age of life. Right? And the whole thing, of course, the sustainability of the designer food must be ensured. If not, it will go nowhere. 
if you cannot sustain the raw material, you cannot sustain the product that you could sell, how can you commercialize it? So sustainability is very important. Okay. And after all this, the communication of the benefits to the consumer must be done. So you must at this point have um, you know, panel of experts that can say, let's say that your product, there are of benefits. The benefit that you have set, you know, your work in the president that you have identified in number one. So you must inform consumers of the relationship between the consumption and production of food and its intended benefit. And this must be done accurately and no mystery. Right? Because in the market, we have a lot of misleading products. Right? So uh, maybe you can read the initials now. Huh? Okay, uh, uh, so I just uh, want to direct, uh, just uh, continue, uh, okay, continue. Next, uh, challenges uh, in development, okay, next. Actually, okay, next, next, uh, okay, safety on the product, no, right, next. Exaggerate the claim, this one, you know, can have a, and have fun with it, okay? Because I mean, is it fraud, right? right? Next, uh, of course, ours is not so friendly regulatory environment, and hopefully it will be changing. Okay, next. Because we cannot have health claim. We can only have function claim. All right, so uh, next. Okay, this one, actually, what I want to do actually is that you should say, since, you know, with the emergence of the new COVID, very, you know, the new they see that person saw you know, that and you know, whatever. So the best thing to do for all of you is look for functional food. So I know I just function. So you should boost up your immune system. That is the way to go to face this new wave of. I don't know, the Omicron, new variant of Omicron, that is so aggressive, that's happening in other countries right now. So you should prepare yourself to face it. Right, next. So what are the superfoods for the immune system? So these are some of the superfoods, okay? Like the functional ingredient, all right? Those omega-3, I say from animal, not from plant, all right? So, in addition, exposure to the sun, because we need vitamin D for the immune system, don't be shy. Of course, don't go, you know, in the broad sunlight. Uh, uh, like many mornings. Avoid stress. If you have friends that are giving you stress, just ignore him or her. Avoid him or her. And sufficient sleep. Hydrated, hydrated, hydrated must be hydrated, please drink water, and exercise regularly. So these are the things for your immune system. And next, the last one that I think, uh, you should also know what are the detrimental foods for the immune system. So these are the ones. So if you have, you know, among your selection of foods, some of these, sugar, Okay, you know what sugar is. <laughs> All right, I always call sugar as maybe not yet. I always, you know, mention to my student salt, right? And excess of fried uh, food, saturated fat, high omega trans fat, and so forth. All right, so I think that's it. I just want to give you with all this you know, for the preparation of coming. New variant. Okay, this is the open series mask. All right, so you can read that. All right, and last, okay. this is the last slide. Uh, All right, so that is the last slide. So I'm sorry that I'm off to the time. 
So thank you very much, everybody, for the uh, attention given to me. You know, I sometimes I go to some places here. You know, okay. I hope they are going to be um, like useful for all of you. All right. And I don't mind sharing all this with all of you and also with um, online uh, community participants. Bye, thank you again. Thank you. And have a good weekend. Thank you so much, Prof, for your knowledge. But I think we still have a few questions. You. Uh, we Thanks, okay. All right. Uh, is there any question from physical class? Mm -hmm. Why are y'all thinking? I'll just read the online question. Okay. Um, the first question is, uh, functional food products being sold in the market, especially in the retail market, Without a doubt, functional food really help in combating certain illness or certain symptoms like what Prof said before. So however, the benefit of those food is pointless if we can't convey the info, the information to the uh, customers. In Malaysia, if you claim those health benefits on the packaging of the food or in the advertisement, the manufacturers or the seller cannot can be penalized since the food regulation 1985 related to the soup. Any idea on how to overcome this problem? I actually, actually, I have anticipated this question because remember I said that uh, I will not so friendly regulatory framework. So um, our uh, regulation is not like uh, some other countries where they do have Upgrades, but what we have uh, actually is only functional food, and we cannot uh, put this health claim in the product. But um, hopefully, the there is uh, you know like if you look at the end of the tunnel, there we can see the light coming. Yeah, in the sense that. We do have what we call as therapeutic claim, but of course, that is not the same thing as uh, functional food. But, but we do have so many to say that there's a you know maybe a dim light, but it is definitely a light at the end of the tunnel or this form there because we want the creation of functional food to be you know to be done by we have the researchers and the um, industry, you know, or most people involved. But with the regulation, uh, that's sort of, um, sort of inevitable. So maybe if ours very good, we can start selling policy. In those countries, they do have help you. Know? In Japan, in the US, in Canada, in other country, Korea, so on and Right? Thank you, bro. So that is second question. Thank you for fruitful presentation. The participants, thank you. Um, so the participant is asking, I'm very intrigued to know about the polysaccharide protein complex. Would you please talk a little about it? Are there any health benefits? Related to it. Protein, carbohydrate, polys, polys and red protein complex. Oh. <laughs> so, this protein complex, uh, protein uh, carbohydrate complex. So, first of all, whether uh, we have to see whether they can be adjusted by our endogenous enzyme or not. Okay. So if they cannot, cannot be digested, meaning to say they will not be absorbed. Okay? They will not be absorbed. Because remember I said that 
our small elastic can only absorb units, smaller units, you know, very, very small, the monosaccharide, the amino acid, and so on and so forth, and uh, visceral and eukaryotic uh, acid. So, if this complex they are talking about are not cannot be digested and they will not be absorbed and they will end up in the colon. And in the colon, you have to decide this whether they can act like prebiotic. Okay, if they can act prebiotic, so they can be the feed for the food microbe. Hopefully, they are good microbes in the system. So, then the impact. From the fermentation, like I have mentioned just now, the generation of the short chain fatty acid, the loading of the bleach, and so on, and the feed for the micro as well as the cells of the colon. So, a lot of wonderful things can happen to you. Well, like I mentioned, some of these active compounds, biotic compounds, will be synthesized by your friends there, and you will be able to absorb them. I can end up in this situation. You have to do the studies of your own right. Thank you so much, bro. So that's all questions from online participants. Any question from physical participants? Yes. Uh, hello. Uh, I have a question regarding no? Uh, I have a question regarding um, processed functional food. Uh, uh, during uh, uh, when we process a functional food, uh, does it uh, can it compromise other nutrients inside the food? Uh, and is it better to consume uh, natural unprocessed uh, functional food compared to uh, the processed functional food? That's it. You're asking the person who is not so keen on processed food. So I have my you know, um, bias about processed food. To me, because I am not a food technologist, I'm a food scientist. Maybe that is not the right way to answer, but I would say that a lot of processed food. They are not of good, you know, they are not so good. You know, to eat. And if you are saying the choice between the natural foods and the unprocessed food, of course, the choice will always be. And you should also, the, the choice will always, will always be for the natural food, the unprocessed food. Right? But of course, some of the uh, foods we have to cook them to prepare or to process, do uh, minimal processing, things like that. And you should monitor, you know, during processing, whatever processing method that you use, you should monitor what happened to the nutrients and to the bioactive compound that you originally have in the food. But for that is sure. You should know the process food. Whether you still have, well, like, <clears throat> whether you still have, like, for example, you're making juice, huh? juice, uh, like uh, juice, uh, you know, your mango juice with lots of variety compound, the color orange, you can tell there's a uh, 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 carotenoid there, and there's also ascorbic acid there. So you want to, uh, of course, you want to process because you want to kill some of the enzyme maybe. So you want to kill, uh, but without affecting the biotic compound, right? So the choice is with you. What processing method that you're going to be using? And here in the faculty, we have what we call as high pressure processing. And you know what high pressure means? When you have high pressure, you can use lower temperature in processing. So it is true that most of the biotic uh, the um, bioactive compound can be, uh, you know, uh, reduced uh, with uh, processing the use high temperature. But if we can use this low 
temperature processing. So they are going to load the best. Now you can maintain higher sparkling of use. You can maintain, um, well, very good, and you can maintain if you were to put in the fish. That is if your entry fee is doing really up to pasteurization. Okay, and not sterilization. Right? So if it involves sterilization, you can have that you know, you counter with a sparkle, color, you know, clear color. Uh, I think that was something about mango juice or whatever. So, uh, this is the other thing. Okay. Thank you. So, any other question? Oh, you are all very tired. And if you're waiting for the weekend, all plan out, but don't go to crowded places. If you have to go to crowded place, uh, places, because you know, you don't know what's looking outside. Of it. I so any other question? Any other question? Yes. Oh, company. Uh, that was uh, uh, actually they were uh, talking about the the absorption. Um, actually, cucumin is very special. You know, like I said, uh, I like cucumin. So, because I I I, I like the taste of the cucumin, also the leaves. Very good. All right. Anyway, the problem is that cucumin is more old. So that's the beauty of the Nagasumi line. You know, the beauty of the recipe of masa lama chili padi. Because you use uh, cucumin a lot and you use also and that can help a little bit in the absorption. But the 2000 times um, higher absorption is when you also have during the consumption also uh, pepper, black pepper. Because uh, uh, studies have shown that cumin with uh, uh, pepper will, you know, that will help in the absorption of the cumin way, way, very high. So go ahead, develop recipe with both. Uh, you know, Present. Okay. Any other question? Any other question? So maybe. Thank you so much, bro. So I assume that is no more question from the floor. Question from the online student. All right. Okay. So. That means we are at the end of the agenda today. I hope you all have learned a lot of information from Bro, uh, from fun facts and from a lot of uh, detailed information to a business development. So after this, you all can develop your own product and sell it, export it to other countries and become rich. So that's uh, more information you all receive with me. So thank you so much, Bro. So to end this uh, agenda today, I would like to invite our lecturer, Dr. Mahani, to give a token of our appreciation to Ram Ali. Uh, I think we should give the honor to the, I think, the most, the person who worked the most. Uh, I think the honor goes to Lydia, the class right for this. Uh, Event today. Okay, for one day, please. Oh, my God. You didn't know what this is? This is very
<laughs> okay, thank you, Prof. All right. Okay. Ah, uh, if you remember this now, uh, Prof say uh, we have a special uh, money mystery gift. I didn't announce it earlier. Uh, we will give the mystery gift for those who ask questions. Uh, unfortunately, tadi only how many of you? Three, yeah. One, two, and three. So that three person will uh, have the oh, owner yes. to get the mystery gift. And I would like to call upon uh, Dr. Sabri, yeah? please. Dr. Sabri, to give the mystery uh, gift in our participant. And also, you are right. three of us here. Exclusive offer for physical participants, right? All right, that's the end of the story for today. Thank you so much again, Prof and Dr. Mahani, for guiding us. And before we leave, let's take a selfie. Let's take a photo actually. Uh, for the online student as well, if you all are turning on the camera, you can take a yes, it happened. You all turn on the camera, we can take a nice photo all of us. Yes, that's nice to see. Oh, some of them are Yes. Ah, all right, one, two, three, cheese. Let's take one more shot. One more shot online, friends. Ready, one, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for all the support from the online participants. Uh, we meet again for physical participants. Okay, Let's take a group for you again. Leave it again.